Hey guys, it's Pastor Andy with The Beat Church, and today I get to talk about something that I think is kind of mind-blowing, really. I mean, this is a whole new phenomenon, and the level that it happens at is crazy, and it can make the world seem pretty impossible. It can definitely make it feel impossible to stand up for what you believe in, to reach out, to be a voice that goes against the grain. It can be just overwhelming, especially for youth, for teens, for public figures, there's just this overwhelming pressure to conform to common thinking, to group think in order to save yourself. And today I'm going to talk about the story of Esther in the Bible, and that's who I'm going to relate this out of. I'm going through different characters in the Bible, and I'm talking about how they followed the God of the impossible to do impossible things and had great impacts. But first, let's talk about cancel culture. Cancel culture is a relatively new thing, at least the term and how it's used. And you may not realize this because maybe you personally haven't experienced it, but man, our youth are just being hammered by this idea of cancel culture. You'll see it on the news sometimes. Maybe somebody comes out and says something or does something that others don't agree with, and they start a campaign, hashtag cancel, and they'll try to cancel this person, their business, get them fired, try to get their uh, just life destroyed. There's even a move right now where Youth go on and cancel their parents if they disagree with them, disagree with their political views, their religious views, something about them. They'll go on and start a cancel campaign and get people to try to get on board of removing them from social media platforms, removing them from their lives. Basically, the idea is if somebody bothers you, cancel them. It's like a TV show isn't doing well. It's not bringing in the ratings. We don't like it. What does the studio do? Well, it cancels it. We've seen this all through society in different forms. You know what? We're not happy with our marriage. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to cancel it. Even to the point that's most recent, you know, become a huge thing in our society is abortion. Abortion is just a cancellation of life. And so do you know what? This is not a baby that I want to have. This is not a situation that I want to go through right now. This affects me in a negative way. I'm going to cancel it. We can literally cancel anything. We can order it on Amazon. And when it arrives at our home, Guess what we can do? If we don't like the order, even though we've already received it, we can put a label on it, cancel the order, send it back and get our money. Our world has become incredibly self-focused to where we look around and say, if I don't like things, I'll cancel it. Well, the problem is when it becomes group think that way and people begin to band together and create cancel groups. And that group gets larger and larger and through social media, it has the ability to do that. People can be canceled from community, from connection, from friendship, without ever even having a chance to defend themselves. There can be a false accusation. There can be a claim against them that's just not true. And they never even get a chance. The whole idea of innocent until proven guilty, completely destroyed with cancel culture. And so Esther in the Bible went through a situation that put this type of pressure on her life, but even to a greater degree. You see, the country that they lived in, there was a decree that was put out against the Jewish people to have them all slaughtered and murdered. Think of the Holocaust. This is older than that. But a similar situation, they're going to be slaughtered. They're just going to be destroyed. Now, the thing with Esther is that she had actually been taken into the king's palace and nobody knew that she was a Jew. And so she was hidden away. She was a secret Jew. And she had actually become one of the king's wives, and she lived a pretty good life. Things were going well. She was safe. She was secure. She was comfortable. But when this decree came out to wipe out her people, she faced a situation where she had to decide, will I stand up for what's right? Will I stand up for my people? Will I stand up for the value of their lives, or will I let them be slaughtered? Now, this seemed like an impossible thing because even if she stood up for them, she would have to expose herself as a Jew, which really meant she would just stand up for them and be killed with them. She would be canceled. Her very life would be taken. And so she had to pray about this and think about this. And her mentor, her overseer, her family member, Mordecai, said to her, who knows, maybe you are here for such a time as this. Maybe this is why you were born. Maybe you weren't born just for living in a palace. Maybe you weren't born to have some influence down the road when it's safe. Maybe you were born because this moment right now in the danger, in the chaos, 
with the risk of being canceled is a time that God wants you to stand up and to rescue people. Well, we live in a culture right now where there's all kinds of craziness going on. And the temptation is to sit back and to wait. Wait for a safer time. Wait for a better time. Wait for an easier time to reach out, to love people, to care for people. To reach out and share Jesus with people. To reach out and share hope and faith with people. To reach out and even talk about what's right. And to take a stand. Well, Esther faced that situation. And she thought about this. She prayed about it. She went to God and she told Mordecai. She said, I will do this thing. And if I perish, I perish. In other words, if they cancel me, that's okay. There was a decision that she made in her heart between her and God when faced with this impossible situation to refuse the fear of being canceled by culture. And instead, she canceled culture. She canceled fear. She stepped out of that entire paradigm and said, God, I trust you. I have faith that if I do what's right, that you'll be with me and I'm going to do this thing. And you can read the whole story in Esther chapter 4. But she comes out and God gives her wisdom and vision and the ideas and the strength and the boldness of how to speak. At the end of the story, she sets her people free. She saves their lives and she takes a place of honor. With God on your side, you can do impossible things even in the face of extreme circumstances, extreme pressure, and even at the risk of your own reputation, your own health, and even at the reputation of your own finances and your own life. We live in dark times. We live in troubling times. That's just the reality. We're facing COVID. We're facing school closures, we're facing economic issues, we're facing race issues and violence issues and Antifas and we're facing every kind of battle. That doesn't even count your personal battles. Those battles that go on in your own home between parents and kids and husbands and wives. And that doesn't even count the little micro battles that go on in your mind, the little teeny ones that go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But God is with you God is the God of the impossible, and even though this situation and this time and this season might seem like the most difficult time ever to have faith and to believe big and to step out and to serve and to love and to care for others, God is with us. God is with you. God is with me. God is for us. And not only do we need to encourage each other to that, But we need to show our kids that it's okay to stand up and to not fear being canceled. That we have the courage to cancel culture and cancel fear instead of letting those cancel us. And that we can stand up and do what God has called us to do. We can shine brighter and brighter in a dark and difficult time. So I encourage you today, find someone to build up, find someone to love, find someone to encourage. Go visit somebody. Go drop a gift off. Take some money and put it to good use. Don't fear losing a job and losing your income. Be generous. Give. Bless others. If you're in a broken relationship, be the first to forgive. If there's someone that's going through a struggle, reach out and help them. It's not a time to play it safe. For we are here for such a time as this. Now is our time. Now is our time to follow God. Now is our time to believe. Now is our time to have faith. Now is our time to follow the God of the impossible and allow him to do the impossible through our lives. Thanks for being on here. Thanks for sharing. Pass this video around. Let's do this together. Let's make a difference in people's lives by sharing hope and faith because that's what God has called us to do.